Okay, the recording is started. This is the September 25th, 2018 Brook Community Meeting. And we will jump into our agenda. I, uh, I don't know if uh, anybody on the call here has some agenda items that have not yet been added to the document. You can go ahead and do that now. I uh, will add them or approve them as they come in. There may be some topics that weren't quite uh, weren't added yet. So let's move on to hopefully what will be very quick, as because we uh, have we did a patch release recently. Was that just last week, Travis? Yeah, last Here Wednesday that or year. so. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And so I like the status of this project board here. Oh, I might need to make my screen a little bigger this week. Yeah. Um, yes, with nothing in to do in progress or in review. So there's nothing that we have planned for backporting or releasing right now that I'm aware of for 0 0.8. So the focus will continue being on 0 0.9. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds great. So while well, I'm in with, uh, we were just talking about an issue this morning around, so I added some logging in 0 0.8.2 around loading the um, or mounting a flex driver to see if we could catch the issue where uh, we format when we shouldn't. And anyway, with the logging issue, Waman, do you, th do you feel like that's a blocking, blocking issue right now or how, um, or is, I, cause I haven't reprobed that myself. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, so the issue itself, uh, that is managed, that's itself uh, immediately. It only happens when you are having a part security context and use a different user ID, a group, oh, sorry, you use a different FS group. And then you'll find out the FS group is actually not supplied on the volume, IBD volume. And um, some, there's some debugging and uh, tracing. It looks, um, uh, there's a speed over uh, console message uh, that somehow gets picked up by the flex volume driver and uh, so that spill, uh, spill over message, logging message uh, become part of the JSON stream and the flex driver is unable to marshal this stream and that's caused the trouble. So um, once that trouble, because this uh, month is retried, the second time uh, the message went away, but uh, the file system is actually mounted. So when flex volume checks the file system is mounted, just skip the rest of the operation, um, which unfortunately, that's a step to assess the ownership of the volume that is not executed. Um, so that's only happens when you assess the part security context. And so I, mean, I think I missed uh, what is the, uh, the consequence of that? Because this, uh, this ticket was originally, you know, there was a lot of focus on it because it resulted in data loss. Uh, with the situation that you're describing, does that, uh, do we just fail to do the, what we intend to and we bail out or is there actually data loss or any, you know, disastrous consequences? It's a, it's a, it's not a corner case. I would say it's a, probably it's a, close to a regression, um, but the regression is next day one. We just only figured that case in when we added additional logging. Um, so in my opinion, that's, uh, it does not hit this uh, data loss issue. Um, the logging did is um, the added uh, volume checking did is did the right thing. It's checked whether the volume is formatted or not and stops formatting and give us the opportunity to view the log and find out if uh, format did the right thing. But the consequence of this additional logging uh, caused the additional issue and that's only discovered when you are using the part security context. And, and but, but can you help me understand what the consequence of that is when that happens? You know, what is the consequence of it? Does uh, the consequence is that uh, um, for the cases that you use the part security context and uh, use the FS group, the FS group is not enforced. Oh, I see. So the so the the mounting in you know the creation of the uh, the volume for the pod that will still complete, but it will not have the intended uh, FS group set on it. That's right. I see. My, uh, my, okay. So my, my gut feel on that is that, uh, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, everybody, please. Uh, but my gut feel is that 
um, the pod security uh, context uh, or how many or policies. Uh, I, I don't know how widely in use that is right now, but my feeling is that that's not incredibly wide, widely used. Um, and then additionally, you know, having a FS group set on it too. I don't know how widely used that is. Um, believe it's not. Uh, OpenShift just give you FS group by default. Uh, so if you are using, if you are just, you, are, you cannot just assume you're using uh, root for everything. Uh, if you run party in OpenShift, um, the FS group will be set to anything. So OpenShift has this uh, security context, uh, SCC, I forgot the exact term. So if you are running as an average user, you will have your own runtime IDs and uh, groups. Uh, so once that is enforced, and if you are running a rook volume, then you are heading into some trouble. This, I mean, definitely what this speaks to, to me, is the importance of, um, you know, having, if, if you know, if OpenShift is, OpenShift is an important platform, that you know, being having that integrated into our CI environment, so that we you know mm -hmm. have uh, you know checks against regressions in that environment like this. Okay. Uh, the case was first reported by Dimitri, so I was debugging on his setup and found out that was actually the case, and I can reproduce its own um, the master code as well as the project A code. Uh, so we'll see we're gonna, how we're going to fix it. Right. Uh, so here's another question to try to understand this better. So the intent of that logging was uh, to be able to get more information about why uh, we were still continuing to see volumes being formatted when we didn't want them to be or didn't mm -hmm. intend them to be. Mm -hmm. But uh, we figured out recently that uh, you know we weren't actually using the uh, up the newer. Kubernetes uh, provisioner, or sorry, uh, Malter code that uses block ID. And so mm -hmm. I think that, I feel like that we have a bit of confidence that that's actually what the cause was. And this logging might not be entirely critical All right. um, because you know we, we think we have root cause, right? Yep. Yeah, that's also an option. Um, so if we are confident the code is robust enough, we don't need additional logging, uh, we can go to a different path. Travis, what's your take on this so far? You, you said you were talking to Wyman about this earlier today. Travis, you still there? Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now, Travis. Okay, so uh, yeah, we didn't get much chance to uh, talk about it, it just popped up. Um, so. It sounds like the severity is uh, well. We don't have data loss. It's um, but it's if it's causing us to run as the root user instead of the, um, the user with FS group. Um, I can't picture if yeah, if it's urgent. It doesn't seem urgent to to have another release to pull out the logging, right? But if we can stabilize the, or even if we stabilize the. Um, the other change in master that's there right now to use the new newer Kubernetes client. Maybe we backport that, but it, it's still risky at this point too. So I, I, don't know, I don't know if we could follow up, I guess, and see if it's really blocking. Uh, it doesn't feel like it, but I'm, I'm not sure. Is, uh, so is, is Dimitri uh, is in the, um, you know, the Pacific Research Platform guys, are they still blocked by this? Or they, do they need a, a specific fix for this? Or what's the status of their deployment? So Dimitri was quite a vocal yesterday on, uh, on this feature, on the FS group feature. Um, he's, um, he said there's uh, some blocking cases in his setup. Um, so if we can reduce crosses and uh, find a fix, that should be great. But he, uh, he mentioned he probably has some workaround um, I have no idea. Do we what understand what that workaround is? Because that might help uh, inform us as well about what we would want to do. Um, I have to check with him what's his workaround. Okay. How about let's uh, let's follow up there to get a because I don't think we have a clear understanding 
of uh, you know the scope or uh, you know, frequency of this impact here. So if there is a reasonable workaround, then I would be hesitant to uh, to spin up another 0 0.8 release for this. Right, agreed. Is that okay with you, Wyman? Can we uh, start a conversation with Dimitri to get a better understanding yeah. of the workaround? Okay. Um, I will follow up with him and uh, probably just come up with the the issue or just a story, and we're going to go follow up with him on that. Yeah, that sounds great. Yep. Cool. Thank you very much, Wyman. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right. So the 0 0.9 milestone, um, you know, we have, uh, as we've said before, this milestone, the scope of it was an intentionally broad and aggressive in the hopes of getting, uh, you know, owners to pick up some of these issues. So uh, we're not going to go through this entire list, um, but are there any particular 0 0.9 issues that we want to bring to this discussion right now in this forum? All right, good stuff. We have other actual agenda items then that we should be worrying about. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got a, a note from Mike too. Yes, <clears throat> um, we mentioned on the, on, the, on the thread about the booth about uh, uh, talking about some more of the logistics uh, in this meeting, because uh, I, um not going to be too helpful in regard to this uh, just because I don't have enough context, but I'm happy to set up like the logistics of the demos and whatnot. So. Cool. All right. So let's go to go in order here then. And we'll, we'll, we'll have added that to the agenda too. Yeah. So Travis, okay. you, you wanted to have a discussion about open service broker and the Ceph object storage CRDs. Yeah, I'll, I'll just specifically. Yeah, I just have a, a short thought on that today. Um, probably more of a discussion next time because um, some people have been out of office the last couple of weeks. But I, I did talk to Yehuda yesterday uh, about this to get a brain dump of of where we were a couple months ago when this discussion wow. came up. And um, yeah, so I'm still gathering information and about what service broker is and uh, you know if it has limitations or what what makes sense for Rook integration. Um, so I guess I'd like to come up with more of a proposal, have a better idea before we spend much time talking about it here. Um, yeah, I don't have a good picture of how it compares to the uh, the doc that um, Tony wrote. Um, that's what, yeah, that's what we need to really discuss. But next time, again, if we could put it in the agenda again. Okay, sounds good then. It's a deferred topic. Yes. Okay, I'm just adding notes for uh, the last topic we had. Okay, oh, I spelled that word right. Nice. Okay, so uh, let's move on to the next topic then. Are Jeremy and Brian on the call today? Yeah, this is Jeremy. Hey, Jeremy. Welcome. To hi, hi, Jared. Hi, hi, everyone. All righty. Uh, do you want to go ahead and kick this topic off then, Jeremy? Yes. And right. uh, the, the, my colleague, Brian, is also online. Uh, both of us have found the published thought. Uh, we dedicated the machine learning and artificial intelligence. And uh, we have done some things for uh, for staff and the Kubernetes. And we can provide the OSD the health the prediction and also that uh, also can the orchestrate the uh, orchestrate that uh, resources for part. So the, we are thinking if the, we can the, bring the artificial intelligence the, to the uh, to the enable the rook to, uh, to make it more intelligent. So ideally, if that uh, we just like to the, uh, develop a plugin. And uh, to the collect the uh, 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 smart uh, performance metrics on the on the line in OSD, and uh, also that uh, provide a uh, uh, prediction for future demands to meet uh, uh, to meet the uh, uh, users that uh, request, and that we can elastic provision the uh, resources without the rest. That is the basic idea. And we already have that. Uh, already have the proposal. And that, uh, if you got time, we can share with you that. 
That sounds very interesting. Uh, so you said you already had a proposal. Was that uh, like a, a design sort of written up? Was that, uh, but you hadn't yet opened any pull requests or anything to share that design for feedback? Yeah, we had done the two parts that we, uh, the this plugin can talk to the uh, staff to uh, detect the OS details and performance. And the, uh, um, uh, also we can talk to the up there uh, uh, part of resources usage. So what we need is just uh, uh, provide the, the plugin to the uh, uh, to Rook and enable Rook to the orchestra storage resources. And that's the only thing we have to do. And the, the rest of the part, we, uh, we are pretty much done. OK. Uh, so to, to make this a little bit more uh, concrete for, for my own edification here, so with some of this um, you know, data that's gathered about the, the device health of OSDs and such, what sort of decisions uh, would the management layer, such as Rook or maybe Ceph Manager, I don't know, what sort of decisions would that data enable them to do? Would they you know, like restart the pod or would they like raise a, events or warnings so that the, you know, a human could get involved or what could it do? Uh, to take the Ceph as an example, and we provide the future of uh, this health prediction to step uh, uh, to step, and uh, step you can uh, you can decide that all the uh, the health results are on step manager, and uh, also, and then step that would uh, take uh, take action, either uh, either to that uh, uh, early uh, evacuate the health, uh, evacuate the drives, or they can. Uh, uh, the, they can the create the, the, uh, additional copies to avoid any kind of the unbalance. And uh, this is for step five. And uh, the, for the other uh, part, uh, part of the station, and uh, we can uh, monitor the uh, uh, compute metrics, and as well as just uh, some the IO usage, and uh, so we can manipulate that, uh, how the parts use uh, lost resources. And by using machine learning to kick that calculation. Oh, I see. Okay, so it's it's uh, not just about like predicting failure, but it's also about uh, you know resource usage and, and predictions for uh, for like load as well. Yeah, we can put a predict that uh, predict the uh, future demand by uh, for the old part, and then the pre allocate the old resources for the uh, for the uh, part. And vertical or the horizontal. I see. So uh, tr traditionally, for me, uh, you know, it's it's always one of the first questions I always ask for when we want to add smarts or intelligence into the management layers is, uh, you know, at what layer does that go into? Um, you know, like for instance, a good the example I always use is uh, you know, for like rebalancing a cluster and moving objects around, uh, you know, getting placement groups balanced and things like that. You know, that's something that in the data layer, uh, the data path that Ceph does exclusively and Rook doesn't come into the picture there, but there, there's other management things like keeping monitors in quorum and you know, the things that, that kind of more focus at the Kubernetes management layer, the Kubernetes API that Rook is very good at and that's an appropriate um, you know, layering uh, separation of concerns for Rook to be interested in. So for this one, it sounds like uh, that it might be a good fit for, um, you know, uh, for managing pods and things like that. That might be a very good fit for the Rook layer, for Rook management. So I'm, I'm interested just to learn more about this um, and see yeah. some sort of proposal we, looks like. Yeah, we have, this, uh, we have a slide. And if you can, uh, and Brian can just sh uh, share a slide with you guys. Just a single slide. Oh yeah, you, ha you have that right now? Yeah, we have it right okay. now. Sure, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, Brian, you're on the call. The, uh, you look like you're, you're muted. I can unmute you. Oh, you're, okay, you're unmuted now. And let's see if, uh, if you can sh take the share or I'll stop mine first and maybe that'll allow you to share. So Brian? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. I don't see a button to make somebody else share. So maybe on your side. Yeah, I think I am, am able to share my problem right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I see your screen now. Okay. Great. Awesome. Uh, yeah, three things that we currently consider we can contribute to uh, the Rook 
look and uh, basically it is like a uh, intelligent layer above look and for our current AI engine we can predict the uh, performance for uh, part node and also uh, storage and here storage may be a uh, SAPS uh, OSD performance or the whole cluster performance and so we uh, based on this performance prediction and then based on maybe the persistent claim have some uh, request about the performance configuration then we can automate the storage provision with more uh, intelligent based on prediction rather on historical data or on just on a current data and the last piece I uh, just described by Jeremy uh, we predict that this failure and so uh, for example when a uh, group is going to provision a, a, a volume to to part then there's no reason to create a volume from uh, from a pool that has some basically that are going to fail so to adapt maybe we can do more in, in the future and other other than this federal petition as since we also have performed petition so we combine these two information to predict the impact of the, this failure to the whole uh, whole cold store uh, whole storage or some of the poor such as that this is our uh, initial ideas about the intelligent layer for group and the desk piece and the next uh, slide is uh, it's the one eighteen. It's one eighteen. Okay. Well, we not we can then not only just uh, orchestrate that the uh, step that always see that, that as well as uh, but also the any kind of the, the third party storage. Yes, thank you. And uh, here's the architecture for loop. And, uh, in the left, you can see. Uh, there is uh, Alamenta that our community engine, which means uh, it will be an open source uh, AI engine that can provide a uh, perform prediction and also this failure prediction. And then we can also enhance the current loop operator with some decision logic that based on the prediction and to do the uh, storage provisions uh, I mentioned in the last slide. So this is the a basic uh, idea about what we can do for Rook to provide a more intelligent storage provision, storage orchestration for uh, Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. So with the with the uh, Alameda Community Engine, um, I, I, I'm not you know familiar yet with uh, with this project. Uh, is that something that's um, you know, had a whole lot of versions already um, released and it's, you know, a project that's been around for a while or can you tell me a little bit about the history of that open source community project? Um, it, it just uh, the code name, we, uh, we decided to for the, uh, for the Rook. Yeah, we have the different project name. And in the, uh, in the sense that it's that the this prediction, the plugin, and for Kubernetes, actually we call it the Fidelity.ai. You can check that uh, uh, Fidelity.ai actually is more popular. So one, one question about this. Uh, which part of this is specific to Ceph, and which one is just standard disk monitoring, smart metrics, all that stuff? Uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, this prediction, this prediction, the plugin, uh, you can search it. They already merged with uh, uh, Mimic. And uh, we collected the uh, information from the uh, directly from the uh, uh, device health the module and uh, including the smart performance metrics, the metadata, the system log, and then uh, generate the predictions for the uh, for Ceph. And uh, the, the Ceph can, uh, uh, according to make the, the make a decision and take the action if they want to the evacuate the drive or to create the additional copies or the uh, replacement, uh, make a replacement plan in the bank. Uh, is there, is there, a, would, could this work also with just standard Kubernetes volumes or any persistent volume in Kubernetes? Yeah, any kind of persistent volume we can support it. So, so this, this would be useful for, say, uh, the local volume support as well? Yes, yes, exactly. 
and uh, um, uh, also the including any kind of uh, storage media, no matter the hard drive and uh, hard drive uh, the solid state, solid state uh, SSD and so on. Yes, no matter any kind of drive. Okay, um, I, I think what I'm what I'm would be helpful is that uh, I mean I, I think this is this might be a useful thing to do for all persistent volumes, um, not. That way, all backends for storage uh, for Rook can benefit from this. So, so yeah. maybe maybe some something to keep in mind that, that this might be uh, more widely applicable. Yes, and uh, actually, we consider that this is support that position uh, position and volume the management. Yes, but the, I know the Rook that already have the that, uh, already have the storage orchestration uh, the features. It's, uh, if you really can provi uh, provide the out of the uh, uh, prediction back to the, the rook, and then the rook can provide uh, and a uh, more dynamic and elastic provision to the, the, the uh, two parts. This is what we can. Uh, this is what we plan, and without the uh, orchestration platform, and even with the, we had uh, uh, we have the uh, prediction for persistent persistent uh, the volume driver and uh, the. the Specifically, the users still have to, uh, sorry, uh, and the vendors still have to, uh, to do their own job to make it uh, more dynamic and intelligent. So that, that's why we uh, just pay more attention to work now. And um, what are the requirements for running the community engine or the, even the commercial engine? Is it- You mean the hardware, uh, hardware requirement? Yeah, does it itself need storage? Oh, it, it's a requirement. It's uh, very low. It's just uh, started to find uh, two CPU cores, the 16, uh, 16 gig memory. What about like uh, persistent storage for the community? Uh, I, the, we, the, we never tried it. I think it will be left. Does it store everything in Prometheus or does it have its own local data store? I, actually, we can just support both, and uh, we can either use the external for, uh, external uh, or the, the local. It doesn't matter. It uh, doesn't matter the where you store. And but in in SAF, actually, we store it in local, uh, local uh, as well as in the cloud. And so, the, actually, we the provide the uh, take a safe example. We can support the, the local predictor uh, as well as the, the cloud service. But so this user can choose the like. Uh, let's, let's have the lost data and predictions that, uh, in the local the step cluster or the cloud cluster. Another well, question, do you, do you have some data you've collected already or samples for of existing Ceph clusters you've run this against so we could see what, you know, what results the engine could give Rook. So if, if Rook can improve its orchestration, um, it, you know, engine around. Yeah, I think that we have to, yeah, yes, we just make a demonstration last week for the, the open state, the common briefing. So we have the demo environment, but, I, but I'm not sure I have to ask Brian, if we, uh, we do we have a uh, demonstration already now? Uh, I need to check it. Maybe we have already bring it down. Let me check it. Okay. Let uh, Brian to check it first. That uh, any other question? Um, what what is the community version? Sorry, is the community version um, like a trial or limited in such way, or is, what's the difference between the community and the commercial version? Okay. The, the only difference uh, between the community and uh, uh, commercial is the uh, accuracy, uh, accuracy and the confidence. Uh, commercial, the, uh, the commercial the prediction accuracy is uh, up to the 95 to 98 percent accuracy, and um, so, um, but the community edition is wrong that the 70 percent, 70 to 80, 70 to 80. Okay. Yes. Uh, 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 the environment uh, was already taken down, so uh, there's no, sorry, I cannot demo this today. Okay, yeah, if, I just thought it'd be 
know, if there's more information or just something to see, yeah, I'd love to see a, a write up for what uh, what it, how Rook can improve the orchestration around around it for sure. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I think the next step then would be to, you know, open an issue on this and then, uh, you know, start having a, like submit a one page or, or design to kind of start talking about this in more detail and have a discussion on that and then like in a pull request. It's, it's, it sounds interesting. It's, I'm definitely interested and intrigued by, um, you know, the improvements and functionality that this, this could offer. So I appreciate you guys bringing that to, to share with us today. That, thank you very much. Uh, no problem. Yeah, very, yeah. very cool stuff. And it would be great if we can make this work for all persistent volumes managed by Rook. Um, that would be that would be awesome. Yes, this uh, this is what we plan. Yes, uh, we can support that the all the persistent volumes uh, and as well as the enable uh, enable the Rook to make it that universal that the uh, intelligent uh, orchestration. Yeah, ju just a really quick last question. Do you, um for persistent volumes that are in cloud providers like AWS or GCP persistent disk, have you guys built any models for failure and failure rates for cloud persistent volumes? Yes, yeah. yeah. okay. we do, we do, yes. That's great, this is, this is really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have been there in this kind of prediction for, for six years, so the, almost everything we already do. Great. Very cool stuff, guys. Thanks a lot. No problem. All right, I believe I'm sharing my screen again. And Mike wanted to talk about uh, the KubeCon booth of having a, a Rook booth there and with the theme and demos and, and such that might be shared there. Did, uh, did anyone want to kick that off with some thoughts uh, that they might have already had? I know, I know I'm personally focused on Shanghai before Seattle. I'm assuming we'll follow the same pattern as we did in Austin, which is uh, we man the booth, we have uh, everybody's, and we've got three companies now supporting it, which is, which is awesome to get the support of you know, all of us coming together, um, having informal demos as people walk up. Uh, yeah, something I absolutely loved about the booth that we had in Austin uh, was the the kind of community um, excitement around it, where we had you know folks uh, you know from the Rook community, users of Rook, uh, stopping by and talking to other people that you know hadn't heard of Rook and kind of sharing what their experiences were. So it wasn't you know just uh, the like the core Rook team; it was also kind of a little bit of a you know. Um, community kind of gathering around the booth and and uh, and having a like kind of a shared experience together, and I, I really like that aspect of it. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, Mike, Mike, I think you've been in contact with uh, Melissa on the upbound side, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, this is kind of putting me in an interesting situation because. Um, I have never really done event planning or booth planning, so I'm kind of looking for a little bit of help there. Um, okay. uh, but I could definitely uh, help with content. Um, uh, you know, if, if some of the booth logistics, if, uh, if uh, we could get support from Melissa, then uh, that could free up my time to focus more on the actual demos that I was thinking of because I really wanted to showcase uh, open attic managing both step and rook together i see okay well i think uh, definitely melissa can help um she's not on this call so uh might might be good to kind of touch base uh separately with her in terms of booth and i know we have um we have a bunch of content for uh, you know artwork for the booth and <clears throat> everything else that we've done in the past um so, so let's, 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 let's coordinate. Okay. It's something that's also yeah, kind of interesting for me here is that this will be the first KubeCon where we, uh, Rook is an uh, incubator project. So, you know, it's on the same level as all the other projects like uh, GRPC and, um, and Envoy and Jaeger and all those. So the, you know, the Rook logo is gonna be more prominently uh, situated all around the conference. So there will be more attention, probably more, uh, um, 
you know, people that are being driven towards the, the booth than ever before also because we're now an actual CNCF, you know, incubation project. So that's pretty exciting as well. Yep. And also, there's uh, a talk on yeah, there will be a talk about uh, what it takes to add storage providers to Rook, uh, kind of that whole journey that we went through to with the lessons learned from Ceph and uh, started to integrate more storage providers like Cockroach and Minio and uh, NFS and others that are still in the pipeline as well. So there will, yeah, there will be a Rook specific talk. And then also there's a deep dive and an intro uh, sessions as well. So there's three sessions about Rook uh, that are full talks that, you know, have full full lecture hall, you know, or, or uh, rooms to, to present into. So there should be a lot of, a lot of excitement, and a lot of interest, uh, you know, going on at the, in, in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to it. Cool. Uh, all right, cool. So yeah, we can, uh, you know, follow up. Uh, I hate saying offline because it's actually going to be online, but you know, outside of this meeting, <laughs> we'll continue to follow up on that and drive towards, uh, you know, what we, what we want to have uh, for a booth and a presence at uh, KubeCon in Seattle. All right, I didn't see anything else on the lists here. Were there any particular PRs that needed to be discussed today? Maybe just a couple of general thoughts. Um, I think the so decoupling of the Ceph version from from Rook. You now there's a number of PRs that you know, a lot of work going into that, um, and I, we're getting close. So thanks, um, thanks Blaine for all that that work. And um, I think there's you know in the Ceph container project, we're dependent on um, a change there to get the Ceph. Uh, images built how we need them. I was just talking to um, to Sebastian about that, and hopefully by uh, this week we can get that through. Um, or there's nothing really blocking. It sounds like at least on that plane. Um, or Sebastian, any other thoughts on on that that's worth discussing? Sebastian, are you there? Okay, maybe not. Um, and then around the CF, CS dry, CSI driver on a separate topic, I think Quaman were, uh, I was about to final, do that final review and, and merge that design doc. Um, anything to bring up here, Quaman, around that? Um, yeah, so uh, the good news is uh, Kubernetes one. Uh, 12 is coming. Um, that's going to be a uh, lot of uh, clearings for the CSI drivers and uh, associated uh, Kubernetes changes. Uh, so, um, for, and also on the staff CSI side, we have made some changes um, that's uh, recently that's give us a uh, lot of uh, features so we can side to side to match the flex driver. Uh, so for point nine release, I am going to do at least some initial work to support CSI, um, so-called out-of-band CSI driver. So if you already deploy CSI driver, then we at least have a way to know drive is there and we make something happen in the background. So whatever you have experience on flag driver, you will have similar experience on CSI. Um, in the future, we are going to support the in-band, uh, that means the Rook initiated CSI driver. So Rook will deploy the CSI drivers and uh, potentially the external controllers as well, the provisioners, the attachers. Um, so it's going to be best, use, uh, best ease of use. Um, uh, so when we move on to Kubernetes 1.12 plus, we're going to have um, everything supported, hopefully. That's it. Great, thanks for that update. Uh, I think that's all on my mind. Yeah, I know, I know that we've been very excited about the, the coming of CSI for you know, a long time now. So it's exciting to see that there's progress you know, on uh, the Ceph side for it specifically as well of you know, supporting the CSI interface and you know, drivers and being able to mount and, and provide storage for pods. So it's very exciting, women. 
All right, uh, so that's everything on the agenda here. And if there's nothing else that anybody uh, wants to bring up here, then we can go ahead and conclude for today. All righty. Well, thanks everybody for attending today and we'll follow up on, uh, on some more discussions. And Just a quick thing, um, watch it in the next 15 minutes. I think the blogs are gonna be published and social activity. So uh, look out for it and retweet. Rook is gonna be announced as a incubating project. So. Yep, but thanks to everybody uh, and all the work that we did as a community to get there. So it's, uh, it's very exciting times for Rook. Yep. Hey. Good job. Awesome, guys. Alrighty. We'll see you all in see you all in a couple weeks then. Bye. See ya. Bye.